my god, my lipstick is really bad. Into the review! <laughs> I'm Tazzy and as you can tell, I am not very good at applying lipstick. You look like a damn crackhead! <laughs> the way this video is going to work is the first half I'm going to just kind of go over the overall plot and things that I liked and didn't like about the show with no spoilers involved. Second half there will be spoilers where I'm really gonna dive deep into my review. So I will include a transition screen in between these two parts to make sure that you are not crossing over into spoiler zone if that's not what you want. So the movie that we watched this week is called Akira. It's Akira! Which is a cult classic anime with one of the largest budgets of its time at about nine million dollars USD. I watched the original 1989 version because I wanted that sick, sick 80s dub. Yes, I watched the dub of this anime because in this house, if we can help it, we only watch the dubs. Pea brain. The story centers around Tetsuo, a biker gang member that develops psychic powers, and then his friend and the leader of that biker gang, Kaneda. The animation was very good for its time. Again, they had that $9 million budget to play with, so it was really, really beautiful. They had really cool Tron-like motorcycles that I found really interesting to look at, and it was very 80s to have that, so that was cool. And then the children were ugly in a good way, which is confusing. I'll talk about that in the second portion of this video, but uh, the children really confused me. Okay, so the story itself is pretty confusing, in my opinion. Manga turned anime and then dubbed in the 80s. Ooh! It really had no chance of uh, not suffering from that, and I think there was a lot lost in translation here, especially when it comes to the plot. I think they cut out a lot of pieces, and then they didn't cut out others. They just didn't sync it up. The parts that they removed required that they would change or adapt other portions of the movie, and I don't think they did that. That left us with a movie that had a lot of irrelevant plot points, I feel, I might be wrong. It was just a waste of time, time that could have been better spent developing the story that was going on, in my opinion. Here are some reasons that I think that you should watch Akira. Number one, this is specifically about the 80s dub and that is the sick 80s dialogue. Oh boy. Down on the ground and spread him! Down on the ground and spread him! Number two, the plot itself is very fast paced. I felt like we were moving through a lot of stuff really fast. So that's good, it kept me engaged. Number three, there's lots of explosions, there's lots of action, and there's lots of gore. So one thing you should know about me is I don't like scary things. I don't wanna actually be scared, but I like it when things are spooky. I wanna see gross stuff. I wanna see the yuck. I just don't wanna be scared. I like the creepy stuff. I don't really like the scary stuff. I don't know if that makes sense whatever. And then finally, we have the best reason, the only reason you need to watch this show, and that is for Kaneda. He is so good. And what do we have here, huh? Are you the funeral director? He was just such an entertaining character, it's wild. So... Let's move on to some reasons you wouldn't want to watch the movie maybe. There are some characters that added absolutely nothing to the film. Again, I think this comes from what I was talking about before with the plot where there was just things lost in translation. So there's one character I have in my mind right now and he reminded me of a rat. He ate up about five minutes of screen time but I really don't know why he was there and it he really didn't add anything to the story so I don't know why he was put in. I don't know why he wasn't cut out completely because I feel like in the manga there was probably a lot more development on that end of the story but in the film it was just like he was there and it was weird. I don't know. I don't know. Again there was just like a lot of unexplained plot points. I really shouldn't have to look up on Wikipedia what the plot of a movie is when I'm I've seen the movie. I've seen the movie. If you're easily confused perhaps this isn't the movie for you. Perhaps. We're heading into spoiler zone. All right, let's hit it. Let's talk about some 
of the characters and we'll start with my boy Colonel Shikishima. Every single time he says now it's a different way and it they all sound like vehicles. It's hilarious. Do it now! And then when things got tough he got tougher dude. He was out in the streets and he was fighting Tetsuo. It was crazy. Next person that I want to talk about is the good doctor. He, I thought, was so funny. I have a couple of clips saved on my phone from the scenes that he's in. Well, no. I just found he was really, really funny, and I don't know. It's just a crazy doctor. I don't know who would like that. Okay, next, I want to talk about Tetsuo's girlfriend, Kaori. So, Kaori seems genuinely in love with Tetsuo throughout this movie, and she's trying to help him throughout all of his struggles, and she was just a really nice girl, I think. Next. I want to talk about Kay a little bit. So Kay is kind of the female protagonist in this movie. I feel like there was so much about her that was probably left out of the anime and it's so disappointing because I just found her really lackluster. At one point she becomes a medium for Kyoko which is one of the children and she like fights Tetsuo but it's like a really nothing fight. I'll show a clip of the, I'll show some clips of the fight, but it's really just sad. I don't know. I don't know why they included it. Was it more exciting in the manga? I don't know. Next, I want to talk about the children. There are three children, the girl Kyoko, and then two boys. Akira! Takashi is in the beginning of the film, and he is running away from the facility where the psychics are being contained, I guess. And... He also has just, he just makes weird noises throughout the movie and I think that's really charming. Yeah. I'm confused about his motives. I don't know why he was trying to run away because he also seemed very happy to be back with his friends. I don't know. Kyoko is presumably the most powerful out of the children, not Tetsuo included. I liked her because she was kind of creepy in a good way and like, ooh. And then finally, the last boy just looks like Donald Trump. And his 80s voiceover kind of sounded like Donald Trump as well, so I'll play a clip of that. I came to get you. Okay, finally, let's get into the main characters. Let's start with Tetsuo. So Tetsuo is the character inflicted with psychic powers. Um, he gets these psychic powers presumably because he comes in contact with Takashi when Takashi is trying to escape. So after coming in contact with him, he develops psychic abilities and then he is contained in the hospital and he just goes crazy. Tetsuo throughout his life has like struggled with his relationship with Kaneda who is his childhood friend. Kaneda has always just been better than him at everything and I think that really upset Tetsuo so once he got these psychic powers and it started to dissolve his mind he really went crazy and tried to like take over the world which is cool for him but like the way that he reacted to things was really good. I'll play some clips of Tetsuo because I thought that his descent into madness was just really really cool. It's my brain! What have you done? Next, let's talk about Kaneda. Kaneda! My favorite character. I really loved Kaneda. I thought that everything that he did was really really funny and he was just a cool guy. I don't know. I just liked him. He was really, really cool. So Kaneda initially is the leader of this biker gang and he's always taking care of Tetsuo and trying to help Tetsuo. So when Tetsuo gets taken by the facility, Kaneda joins Kei and her like task force of whatever they're doing to go and liberate the psychics because he wants to save his friend. So that was really nice. And then he finds out that Tetsuo is going crazy and he starts going on a rampage so his mission becomes to then stop Tetsuo which was really cool. So he they actually have a few fight scenes between the two of them and they were all very entertaining and yeah good for them. Here are some of my favorite moments from the anime. First and foremost is Kaneda whenever he's on his bike or whenever he's doing anything. Oh my god! It's just so good. Number two is Tetsuo going crazy. Whenever he starts mouthing off and like doing weird stuff, I just fall in love. Oh boy. Number three is when Tetsuo has his nightmare. It's the other children's psychics that are invading his mind and trying to make him go crazy. I don't know why. That's another plot point I didn't understand. Why were they trying to make him go crazy if they also wanted him to be able to control his powers? I don't understand what was happening. What's going on here? Ah! That whole scene was just really cool with the creepy stuffed animals. Ooh! 
I liked that. Finally, my favorite moment of the whole movie is when Tetsuo gets gross. Again, like I said before, I like creepy stuff. I like icky, gross things, but I do not like to be spooked. So this was very happy for me. He was really gross and yucky, but nothing scary really happened. So I really like that. Some of my least favorite moments from this anime. The first one is when Tetsuo takes Kaori and they run away. So in this scene, they get tracked down by the clown gang and Kaori gets beat up and it was just really hard to watch. I don't know if like in the 80s that was just like a more normal thing to see, but I just like cringed really hard and her like shirt got ripped open and it was just, ugh, I didn't like it at all. Number two, when K was being used as a medium. Again, I talked about this a little bit before and I just don't understand what happened here. And then finally, the scene that I hated the most out of this movie was the interdimensional scene. After Neo Tokyo gets destroyed, Kaneda is like floating in this dimensional space and he's being talked to by the psychics and it's all very 80s anime and confusing and I just don't like that. I don't know. After I watch an anime, I almost always am left with questions that have me all confused. I just, I'm so confused. What in the world is happening? First question I have is why were the children old but young? So in this story, in 1988, the original Tokyo was destroyed and then was rebuilt into Neo Tokyo. We discovered that the children along with Akira were trained and Akira was the one who destroyed the original Tokyo. So that was back in 1988 and they were they looked like the same age back then without the face. Their bodies are children and their faces are seniors but they are like in their 40s. What? Number two is why did Akira die? So did Akira blow up the way that Tetsuo did? Did he turn into like a big mass and then destroy everything? I don't understand because they had some of his body parts in those capsules. I just don't get it. I wish they would have told me how Tokyo was destroyed and not just that it was destroyed, you know? Number three, again, why does K matter at all? Why was she so important? It doesn't make sense to me. I just am so confused. And then finally, number four, where did the psychics go after everything? They saved Kaneda, but in, in saving him, they weren't able to come back? But where did they go? I don't think that's a question that was supposed to be answered. It's just a question that I have. All right, so here are my overall thoughts. If you are already a fan of anime, I do recommend this movie. It's a classic. It's critically acclaimed as one of the best anime films in kind of the sci-fi genre, even today. I don't know why that is, but it is. And I'm sure other people would like it even though I didn't like it that much. You cold bitch! I do not think that this is a good anime to start with. If you are not as deep in the ocean that is anime as I am, I do not think you should start here. It's got a very particular 80s style. I also couldn't connect with any of the characters. It made it hard for me to develop any kind of emotional connection to what was going on. Finally, the action portions of this movie were actually pretty cool. Um, it had a lot of interesting ideas and I just think that it was just a little poorly executed. That's just my opinion and you can fight me in the comments, but I just didn't really like it that much. I'll probably watch it again. Maybe I'll try looking at the other dub. Maybe I'll watch it subbed. Maybe I'll read the manga. Probably not, but I just hate saying that I don't like it. I just really didn't like it that much. I was entertained. I was completely entertained for the entire three hours. But again, I didn't really like it. Thank you for watching. And if you like what you heard, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing a couple more of these reviews. I don't think this is really the direction that my channel is going. But like I said, I'm watching a lot of anime in this pandemic. So I might as well make some videos on it. Now you're king of the mountain, aren't you? But it's all garbage. See ya.